you know, there's, there's rhythms to the academic year, but the uh, gratification you get um, comes in small daily doses and then in larger doses when you get to take stock and have a retrospective uh, on what collectively you've done. And, and so it really is a team sport. And it's very important that you have the right team, uh, starting with the board and the alumni, the faculty, of course, the staff, uh, the local community. Uh, if you can get everybody aligned, everybody in agreement as to what the mission is. Well, there, there's things that you think you know um, about an institution. I, I thought I knew how dedicated and passionate the faculty were to teaching. But then when you see it, every day when you hear from the students how important their faculty uh, are to them, how accessible they are, how they've made such a difference in changing the trajectory of their professional career. Uh, that's when it really becomes um, a much more powerful impression than, than just reading about it or hearing about it. So I think over time you, you get a much greater sense of the institution, uh, its strengths, some of the challenges, uh, the dedication of the alumni, uh, and um, really how very special the place is. Uh, the first year especially, there were a few days I would come home at the end of a, a hard day and uh, talk with Elizabeth and uh, think that, you know, the school's been around a very long time. It's probably not going to end today, though it may seem like it, it could. Uh, and in knowing that there is this remarkable history the institution has been so enduring, uh, really was reassuring in a way. And so, um, you know, you start to, to fix things, you start to address some of the, the challenges, you start to make adjustments, and you start to have successes over time. And you bring in uh, talented people to help you. And um, so the first year was by far the toughest, and I wasn't sure whether I was up to the job. And so I think that I had a lot of help. People were very patient with me. And I think that uh, we were able to figure a few things out over time. Uh, just last month, 450 institutions publicly uh, announced that they did not meet their enrollment goals for this fall. Now we have around 4,000 colleges and universities in America, and it's highly unlikely that a decade from now that same number will exist. So there's a consolidation that I think is starting to take place in higher ed. So how do you not just insulate Washington College from these demographic, technological, financial trends, but how do you um, reposition the school to be more successful 10 years hence than it is today? And so we thought a lot about that, and um, I think that we're, we're in a really good place right now. We had a terrific year. Uh, this fall is going to be one of the most diverse entering classes in the college's history. Um, I think that we went through a tough year last year with a budget deficit. Um, we did not lay anybody off, did not fire anybody. Um, we were able to get through that, and uh, I think that we're going to have a, a much better uh, financial year this coming year and hopefully in the future as well. The, f the fundraising, um, that's not onerous at all. I mean, I get to meet with great people who love Washington College, yeah. and if I can help them realize some of their dreams by giving back to the institution that did so much for them, where they got a great education, where they met their spouse, where they formed lifelong friendships, uh, where they started companies. Uh, that's fun. That's, that's hardly working. That's, that's just a great experience. And many, many alums have great stories to tell, and uh, I love hearing about them. Um, I, I'd like to think that there's a new sense of self-confidence, um, both for the people who work here, but also among the alumni. Um, Washington College really is a remarkable institution. It has a unique personal connection with our greatest founding father, George Washington. We've tried to, to do a few things to emphasize that and make that more tangible for students. Uh, I think that we have closed the perception gap uh, out there in the marketplace between the extraordinary education that's on offer here for our students and how we were seen uh, in many of the markets over the past few years. Um, our students are performing not just in the classroom, but on the athletic fields. Very happy about the success we've had. Um, not just All-Americans, but academic All-Americans. Um, remarkable number. I think four members of the women's crew team were just named a few days ago, the academic All-American team. Uh, we see this in other sports as well. So 
again, the excellence both in the classroom and outside of the classroom now being better understood by the market, by our alums, who can be proud of what's happening at their alma mater. So, well, if you're asking, is it gratifying? Yes, it's immensely gratifying. Um, uh, not to me, but because of also what it means for the institution, for all the people who work here, and for this new great student cohort who are going to be coming in in the fall. But again, it was a team effort. The board initially agreed to uh, advance uh, some funding so that we could build out that beautiful visitor center that we have now, to hire some new people to do things a little bit differently with social media and our marketing communication strategy. We were able to attract some really great outstanding talent uh, and they've worked very very hard. The faculty also have really put themselves out to connect to visiting students. The alumni have been mobilized in order to call admitted students and talk to them. Parents have been mobilized to talk to other parents. So again it's a, it's a team sport and um, what's gratifying in particular is not just the success but how everybody co coalesced. Uh, around the mission and we were successful. Point, I think that we're on a much better pathway. Um, we're on a stronger financial pathway, but also a stronger academic pathway. Um, we are moving, transitioning, and we've really done it this year from largely a regional school that draws disproportionately from the mid-Atlantic region to a national and international college that's known throughout the country and overseas. That's Pivot has already taken place, uh, and we'll just continue to build on that success going forward. There's a couple ways to respond. First of all, you have to be empathetic because it's a lot of money. Um, my daughter's in college now. I know it's a lot of money. Um, and, and so we try to do everything we can at first blush to see where we can save money and pass it on to parents. One of the things that we started this past year and we'll be building on this is a three-year three, three year pathway to graduation. So students who come with some AP credits, IB credit, can get some advanced standing. They can take a course overload or one or two courses a semester, maybe take a couple of summer courses. They can graduate in three years. Now we've always done this. We've always allowed our students to do it, but we've never really emphasized it. We've never marketed it. But here's a way to shave off an entire year of your undergraduate uh, expense and the opportunity cost of either getting to grad school a year early or getting to the job market a year early. In the last decade, we've had 41 students who found a way to do this on their own. And so what we've done now is created an institutionalized pathway to help the students uh, identify them early and ensure that if they want to do this, we will make it as easy for them to get through here in three years and have as close to the traditional Washington College experience as possible. The larger question has really been, in, uh, has been addressed by a lot of the media. Um, and just the other day, I think the New York Times had an article about, is college worth it? Yes, it is. You look at the discrepancy in income over lifetime. Um, and that's one narrow way to do it. And, and that's certainly uh, not trivial, given the costs. Um, but there are other ways we know, and it is the quality of your life, the experience you have, learning how to think critically. Uh, we know that the students who graduate within 10 years are going to have three, four, five, six jobs. Um, anything we teach them is unlikely to be directly relevant to that fourth, fifth, or sixth job. Never mentioned all the jobs that they're going to have beyond that. So how do you teach them uh, this critical thinking? Uh, how to express themselves clearly, how to communicate. One of the big uh, emphases that I've had is uh, the whole notion of moral courage, how to have a great sense of integrity to stand up for what you believe and to speak out, especially when others are reluctant to do so. So I think that there are a variety of benefits that you get. Um, the pure economic data show that it's still a very good investment. And, and I should also add, um, we are very generous. Uh, the vast majority of our students get some form of financial aid, either merit-based aid or need-based aid. We try to make sure that they're not burdened excessively with debt. So that when they graduate, uh, I think our average debt load for students who do borrow money is below the national average. And they have a very, very strong record of repaying. It. So we're mindful at every step of the way how we can do this better for families, how we can help students get the skills they need to be successful in life, and make sure that they are not excessively burdened when they graduate. The great contribution of uh, 
the task force led by John, um, was it really highlighted some of the concerns, some of the challenges, some of the trends here, both in terms of the schooling system, both in terms economically, unemployment, taxes, um, that I think needed to be said, and I think surprised a lot of people. Um, they weren't inherently obvious to a lot of folks. And you go downtown and you see some of the dark storefronts, and okay, that's fine, but then you go home and you don't forget, you, know, you don't think about it that much. I think what the task force did was really give a wake-up call. And again, um, not just say the town has a problem, but also come up with over 40 you know, serious recommendations about ways in which things could be made better. I think that's of lasting impact, and I think it still guides what, uh, what the mayor and the town council, how they think about uh, the future of, of this very special place. All credit to, to John Seidel and his team. Um, to me, it wasn't just the monitoring of the water quality in real time uh, and being able to collect all that information will be the best understood river in the entire Chesapeake Bay. Um, it's kind of a wonder this hadn't happened earlier. It's scalable so that once you do it here, you can do it elsewhere, not just scalable for the Bay, but scalable for other bodies of water around the country and around the world. And um, the genius of it, really, for me, was John then um, putting the monitoring uh, in schools so the kids can understand this. The kids are invested. This is part of their identity. And it really anchors them to the community in a way that's going to have last, this will last their entire lives for these students. So he gets this buy-in from K through 12 kids. And he gets the data. And it just doesn't get better than that. Uh, well, we've got, uh, we've got a boathouse to build. And um, again, we want to build a boathouse as good as our crew teams and our crew coaches, who are extraordinary. And um, we've got a new uh, interdisciplinary center that'll house the Center for Environment and Society down there. And those should be signature buildings. And um, that's really where the future of the school lies in terms of the next phase. I, I feel that I um, have a much greater appreciation for higher education. Um, and even though I had spent a number of years at William & Mary, um, the view's different from the presidency. And it's been a time of great turmoil, which is the question you really let off with. Tremendous uncertainty. Um, you've got the president and everybody else saying it's all about the return on your investment. Um, you've got the financial uncertainty, the, the slow recovery from 2008. You've got the technology with online education. You've got the for-profits. And you've got the demographics, which is declining in the mid-Atlantic region. Um, so how do you maneuver, how do you navigate through the uncertainty? You keep your eye on what the prize really is and how do you manage to, to, to get there? And I think that we've been able to do that. I think that, um, again, trying to convey a sense of moral courage, trying to demonstrate um, leadership, um, trying to create a space where voices, regardless of their views, can get a respectful hearing something that we haven't seen recently yeah. uh, at some other institutions with respect to the graduation ceremonies. So I'd like to think that we've been able to do a few things. Um, I'm not sure how new they are. I think they've always been here. Uh, maybe I've just been able to bring them into relief a little bit more, but um, they've been here since, you know, Reverend Smith and George Washington figured out that this was what they wanted to do. Stick around. We should really ask the board that. I, I work for them. I work for them. So you can interview the board, and uh, they can let you know how they think I'm doing. But Elizabeth and I have uh, loved uh, virtually every minute we've been here. And it's a very special place. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's fine. Good.